Um, actually, before I start, don't we have an awesome praise band? <laughs> we have always, that's one thing in this church from the time I started as a youth until now, the no matter who we've had up here has been like, I don't care, it's, I think it's the best in the world, but anyway, that's my own personal thing. Um, Philippians 4, 6 and 7 says, don't worry about anything, pray about everything, tell God what you need, and thank him for all he does. Then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything that we can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. Okay, so here's my disclaimer. This is here for a reason. For those who don't know, I'm the biggest baby in the world. I will produce tears whether I'm happy, sad, any emotion in between there. Um, so anyway, it already started when I was sitting there. Well, actually, it started this morning when Matt was on Facebook Live. So just throwing that out to you, Matt. Thank you. I thought I had gotten out of my system, but obviously not. So just so if I reach for a Kleenex, that's I'm okay. It's just me. Um, my life started out in Lowell, Michigan. My grandparents owned 80 acres, which was all surrounded by state land. They gifted each one of my mom's brothers and sisters five acres. So we had our five acres, my grandparents left over 40 acres plus surrounded by state land to play on when I was a kid. So I had tons of room, hence probably why I'm still so hyper because I started that way. Um, we had all the land we could possibly want. I also had great friends that we went roller skating in the movies with because in Lowell, that's what we had. We had everything. We thought our lives were so good. When I was 10, my dad bought a full-service gas, gas station in Belling. For those that don't know, the younger group, a full-service gas station, you could get everything your car needed. You could get your windshield washed, which that was my very first job. You could get your oil changed. You got gas. You got your car repaired. And even if you broke down, my dad came and res rescued you with his wrecker. Ionia County Sheriff Department at the time had a rule that if you wanted to run Wrecker and get calls from them, you had to live in Ionia County. So we moved the 17 miles north to the big town of Belding. When we moved here, it was after they had tore down the old Belding, so I don't know anything about that. We moved to Belding. There was no roller skating rink. There was no movie theater. We moved in town, which means I had no land to play on. And um, so it was, it was a little bit of an adjustment for me. My mom was still the cosmetologist in Lowell and continued there for her work. So on Saturdays, I would travel with my mom to see my grandma and hang out with my friends. Soon, I met new friends in Belding. I was invited to attend a youth group with my new friend Pam and her family. Her parents were youth leaders of a little church on the corner of Franklin and Grove in Greenville. Jerry and Bonnie Johnston started taking me to church activities with them whenever I wanted to. When I lived in Lowell, I would go to church with my grandparents. They were Catholic. So this was a little bit different. The Johnstons let me come to as many church activities with them as I wanted. And back in the day, we had several a week. Church was something I looked forward to. No one ever judged me. I made friends that accepted me just as I am. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. This church was truly a blessing to me as I joined a new church, new friends, and dealing with the joys of being a teenager. And I'm sure they thought I was a joy too back then. <laughs> um, Proverbs 18.24 says, There are friends who destroy each other, but a real friend sticks closer than a brother. There's a, blo there's a blog in Flowery Blessings. The author says, Family isn't always blood. They are the people in our life who want to be in theirs. The one who would do anything to see smiles 
and he loves us no matter what. This church family, this church, truly became a family to me, and I'm still here 40 years later. Acts 20, 25 says, It is more blessed to give than to receive. <laughs> Sorry, online, if you're seeing me. <laughs> so, yes. <laughs> pastor O'Leary, who was a pastor here when I was a youth, had a puppet ministry that he let us youth be a part of. I love being part of that ministry. I was a kid that would try anything, but never found I was good at anything. I really loved to twirl my baton, but being a drum major in the band wasn't possible because I couldn't play an instrument. I loved to play softball, but I definitely threw like a girl, a left-handed girl at that, and I'm not very coordinated. We joke that, for those of you who know my daughter Charlene, she can pick up any sport, you can just say the word, and she plays it like she's been playing it for 100 years. That's why I don't have any sport ability. I saved it and gave it all to her because I'm so gracious. I tried cheerleading, but I couldn't do a cartwheel. My friend Holly tried for I don't know how many times in our front yard trying to teach me, and we finally just gave up. Not in the cards. So school activities were kind of out of the cards for me. So church is where it became. Um, Pastor O'Leary allowed us to be in the ministry and do basically anything we wanted. So that was a really big blessing for me. We did many awesome performances. My favorite was probably Mary Had a Little Lamb, and that's probably not the right name because I know that book is copyrighted, but it was about a lamb and the animals and how they felt about um, Mary and Joseph coming into the stable. It was a really cute puppet performance. Um, Pastor O'Leary was also a very good ventriloquist, and for a while he let a group of clowns travel with him. Yep, you guessed it. We were the clowns. We had tons of fun clowning around with Pastor O'Leary. And still to this day, when I put on makeup, I feel like a clown. That's probably why I don't wear makeup, because I can't get it on right. This church was very willing to let the youth get involved in everything. We served the church and also involved in outreach missions of the church. This church always, has always been full of people who have loved blessing others. I could not have asked for better supporters and mentors going through my teenage years. To this day, I still love and admire those people of this church who love me unconditionally. Proverbs 11.25 says, A generous person will prosper. Whoever, refused, whoever refreshes others will be refreshed. Count your blessings, he's made them one by one. Count your many blessings, see what God has done. It is very easy when we think, when things go bad in our life, to forget all about our blessings that surround us. Matthew 6, 34 says, So don't worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will bring its own worries. Today, today's trouble is enough for today. We all know that life can't be all sunshine and roses all the time. But if we all focus on the trials and tribulations in our lives, we will never be able to find the blessings that surround us. I have had many situations thrown at my life that have not been easy. But I have learned that you have choices to overcome the situation and try to find the blessing somewhere in the chaos of the event or go down a road where the devil is just waiting to take over your faith. When I was in my mid-20s, I was going through a divorce and was trying to make the best of being a single mom. We were heating our house with natural gas and using a fireplace to keep warm and to keep the cost down. One morning, I noticed several pickup trucks pulling into the driveway. It was the men from this church dropping off firewood for us. Little did I know that when my dad made me split wood as a teenager, that I would actually think that was a blessing years later. Blessings are something that makes the person giving the blessing and the person receiving the blessing be filled with love and grace. Blessings come in all shapes and sizes. 
some days it is harder to find our blessings than others, but they are always there. We just need to look for them. From that hug you receive right at the right moment you need it, or maybe it's the phone call or the card you receive. Maybe it's knowing that people were praying for you when you needed it most. Maybe it's food or a meal someone brought to you. Help with paying a bill, a house repair, a handicap ramp. Maybe it was just waking up in the morning pain-free. Blessings are all around you. You just need to look for them in life and not dwell on the bad. And for me, blessing, blessing others as much as a blessing is acknowledging my blessings. The feeling you receive, knowing that you have helped bless someone else, is the greatest feeling ever. I think that comes from being able to recognize all the blessings that I have been given. I have found that usually when you are passing along blessings, many more come right back to you. Acts 20.25 says, It is more blessed to give than to receive. Did I already read that? Maybe not. Okay. <laughs> I've had many struggles in my life, and I think a lot of them have made me who the person I am today. I know how to feel to have to ask for help, to keep your utilities on, to make the food go as far as possible, to ask for assistance for health insurance, and to pay those medical bills, and to ask for sincere prayers when you think life is going to take you over the edge. I think it has given me a greater passion for wanting to help others. My mom had a friend that worked at ACAP. Every Christmas, she would give my family a name of a, fa a, name of a family in need. The girls and I would go shopping for them, and then we would play a little game. We would take it and put it on their porch, ring the doorbell, and then run and hide and watch the reaction when they opened the door. I loved watching my girls through the whole process from the time we got the names and they had to figure out the ages till we bought gifts till we didn't. Um, it was just awesome to see my girls in that. And I'm so proud of my girls. Now that they're all grown up, they're all ca ca compassionate and caring adults. Love you guys. <laughs> um, I love being involved with the mission of this church. I never set out to receive the blessings I do. It's just the way it works out. Mission trips are a good example of this. When I met my husband, he was driving truck over the road, and he's currently still a truck driver. I had several years when I first started my daycare that I had no children during the summer. So the kids and I would travel with Mike in the truck. I learned that if I drove, I didn't have to deal with the three kids in the bunk. And I don't know if much of you know about semis, but the bunks, we had a really nice truck at one time before it got an accident. And, but still, it gets kind of crowded with three kids. And um, so I learned to drive, so I didn't have to be in the bunk with the kids. It got crazy, but I wouldn't trade those adventures for anything. Little did I know that driving semi would start me to be able to have the courage to drive the church bus on mission trips. Appalachian Ministries was my first out-of-state mission trip. Going to Kentucky in November to wrap presents sounded like a pretty easy trip. Well, some of you have heard this story before, so sorry. Um, our accommodations ended up being a mobile home that I'm pretty sure was older than me. And yes, kids, that's old. It had several sets of bunk beds and a bathroom. That was about it. They had torn out the kitchen, and it was, that was about it. We were told ahead of time that there was no heat source, so we came prepared with a full set of heaters. We got there just before dark and settled, started to settle in. It started to get a little chilly, so we plugged in the space heaters. And then the power went out. I was so thankful that I had the skill set to know that you need to find the fuse box. <laughs> So then we had, we were, turned the fuse box back on and it kept popping. So I went outside to see maybe if there was a main breaker. We didn't come prepared for having to be out at night. Somebody happened to have a little purse flashlight. So I'm out 
in the middle of the mountains in Kentucky with a little flashlight. Nobody else wanted to go out with me. I'm looking at the people. So here I am with this little flashlight trying to get the power pole. I found the power pole. There is a literally the, an orange extension cord. That is what was powering the whole trailer. So we came back in. I figured how to strategically place the space heaters so that we could keep our power on all night long and stay warm. Um, we did have time in our sleeping bags to sit and reflect and had some really good conversations. It was one of those moments where it wasn't the easiest to think to find our blessings in the chaos of what was going on. But to think at home, I am so blessed with just being able to turn on my furnace and flip on the light switch, the situation really wasn't that bad. To think of all the people who don't even have the option to flip a breaker definitely makes you think of the blessings of electricity and heat that we take so far at granted. I think sometimes when we are taken out of our comfort zone is when we truly recognize our blessings. This is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. We continue on our mission and wrap presents for the next two days. Even though we were tried at times, we could feel the blessings all around us. This trip has led to the mission that I look forward to being part of every year. And added. <coughs> And as an added blessing, the accommodations have majorly improved. Appalachian Ministries mission trip is a trip that I that has been true blessings to me in more than one way. I have found that this trip is a time for me to reflect. I don't always take the time to sit back and reflect on all my blessings going on in life. To hang out in the mountains with nothing but noise of nature is a great thing. And then the blessings I receive knowing what our mission means to the Lacey's is amazing. I am also surprised at all the blessings you can receive from blessing someone else. After about 10 years of thinking I would go on an international mission trip, I finally took the plunge. We were headed to Guatemala to stay in a hotel. Sounds like a pretty good trip. It definitely wasn't a five-star hotel but it was an improvement over the Kentucky trailer. It had an amazing rooftop view, which made it seem like a five-star motel. It took me two days to figure out the shower. I ended up figuring it out without getting electrocuted. And for those that know, have been to Guatemala, you know exactly what I'm talking about. And yes, there is a story there. <laughs> We set out to paint the sanctuary of a local church. Well, it actually was the whole church because their church was one big room. In between painting, we provided a VBS for the local children. Even though I didn't speak any Spanish and they didn't speak any English, we managed to communicate and have an amazing time. There was so much love, my heart felt full the whole trip. The, la the last night we were there, the ladies gave me a scarf. One of the ladies gave me a scarf that she had made. I will treasure it forever. And also we had, so me and Michelle, the year before I went, we were in um, a little town in Grand Haven, and they had these little, I don't even know if you guys can see it, it's so little. Let me put it my hand away. See, it's really tiny. This little, they're wooden, little Michigan things in a, one of the little shops. And I was like, oh, that would be cool to take and give to people. So I took these and I gave these to the ladies. Well, most of the ladies, they carry maybe just a little pouch like this with them. That's all they carry for a purse. They don't have like astronomical big purses like we carry. And um, at the end of the week, I had been passing these out all week. And at the end of the week, I was asking the ladies if there was anybody that didn't get one. And they all pulled these out of their little things. They had put them in special spots in their wallets and we're saving them. That just made my heart melt. Because it's, I mean, it was just, it's just a little token. 
And it meant a lot to them that they hung on, they hung on to that. I am so thankful that I have had all the opportunities to be involved in the missions from Greenville all the way down to Guatemala. Blessings are everywhere and are for everyone. So count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your many blessings, see what God has done. Psalms 103.2 says, Let all that I am praise the Lord. May I never forget the good things he does for me. Thank you.